Okay, so here is the last video for this term. Um, this is a fairly large program, and if you look at it, it puts everything together, all the things that we have learned from Chapter 1 through Chapter 9. So our goal in this is to read from a text file, and here's the data that we have. We have uh, two columns. One is the model number and then a bin number. So for an inventory database is what we have. So what we want to do is we want to create a struct to hold each record. So what we want to do in this is to read it, define our own struct uh, for these two data types, model number and string uh, bin number, using strings, and load all of this data from the file into our program when it starts running. And then we are going to do a couple of, so we're going to have a menu-driven program. So we're going to have a menu um, that comes up as soon as our program starts, ask what the user wants to do. In there, we're going to have search by model number and search by bin number. Those are the two things we can do. Because as soon as our program starts, we're going to load the data from the file. So our database will already be loaded. And remember, this is just a temporary database. We are not, we're loading it to our uh, memory when the program runs. From the file, it gets loaded to memory, and then we output the menu to the user and say, what would you like to do? Would you like to search by model number and or bin number? Now, there are more things you can do with this menu. You can add to our database. We can have them add more items. We can have them delete items, but we are not doing all of those things at this point in time, but that's something that you could try. And those um, are the things that you could do to make yourself a better programmer is how to um, expand on the program that's already there. So in this case, our menu will simply say search by model number or search by bin number. And if the user wants to search by model number, then we ask them what is the model number. And then we do a comparison to see if it exists in our database. And if it does, we output the model number and the bin number. If it does not, we simply say item not found. And the same with the bin number. So it's going to show you several different things, how to create a menu, how to um, output the menu to the user. The user interface is very important. You want a clear menu. You want to be sure that the user is very clear on what they have to enter. After we read it, we figure out what we want to do with the input, how we want to handle uh, the comparison, and finally output to the screen. So let's start. We have all our four header files that we usually need, IO stream, string, F stream and IOMANIF. I have two constants. There's something new in this program that we're going to do. In our last video, we saw how to create a single record, a single um, variable from a struct. For example, we did PCC student and PSU student. So they were just two single students. But once we get into a database, we never have one or two items. We always have a list of items, a list of students. So in this, we are going to see how to create an array of structs. So we're going to define a struct with our model number and bin number, and we're going to see how to create a list of items, an array of that struct, so we can read each line from the file into each row of our array. So I have a constant for that. Cap equals 100, so right now my array can hold 100 elements. And I have max char, which is the number of characters for my file name, which is where I use the char array. So here is my uh, struct inventory type. Notice the capital I and the capital T. Just has two data members because that's all we have in our data list. If you look at our file, model number and bin number, and they're both strings, and the semicolon. We also have a number of functions. I have broken down my entire program into different modules. The first one says open file. It's a void function, takes our file stream variable by reference. It opens a file, it checks to see if the file opened. If it did not, it exits the program. If it opened, then it comes back and it does the rest of the program. Display menu simply outputs the menu to the user. Read input reads the option that the user enters from the menu. So if it says um, M to search by model number and B to search by bin number, 
whatever they enter has to be read. That's what this function does. Execute command takes that input that the user enters and figures out what function needs to be called. If it is search by model number, then it calls a search by model number function. If it's a search by bin number, then it calls that function. Now this function needs to take a few parameters. Notice this function execute command is going to make some changes to our array. It is going, or it's at least going to use our array to search in our list and find out whether it exists or not. So we have a char variable that we take and pass to execute command. We have our array, which is our array of our struct. Notice, it's just a regular array, but instead of an array of integers or an array of strings, it's an array of our struct data type. That's all it is. So it's an array is an array at the end of the day. So the square bracket says I'm passing an array. Remember, by default, an array is passed by reference. And then I'm passing the size of the array. I need to know how many elements I have to go through. If I loaded 10 lines of data from the file, then I search only through the 10 lines, even though my array has a capacity of 100. I'm not searching through the entire list. If there's no data, then there's no need to search. Read data essentially reads from the file and puts it into the array. Search model searches by model number. Again, we pass the array and the size to that function. Search bin again passes the same array and the size. Notice when we're dealing with arrays and we want to do things, we pass the array and the size all the time to the functions because that's what we're operating on. Output data takes the array information and outputs it to the screen. So let's start. Go into main. It'll all make more sense as we go through the program. Um, here's my array of my struct, the struct inventory type. Store room is my array. It's my list of cap. So it's just a variable name. I could call it list of cap, whatever I want. But that's my array. It's the store room. So my store room has a capacity of 100 like we created before. And it's of inventory type. So if you think about it, each line of storeroom can hold a model number and a bin number. It's like a database is what it is. I initialize size equals zero. Size is going to keep count of data as I load from file. It's a dynamic variable, meaning it changes as we add elements. That's what we mean. Char option is just a char variable that we are going to use to read input from the user. I have stream in file to read data. Okay, we've declared all the variables. Now we call our open file function and pass in file to it. Notice we pass in file by reference, so we have the ampersand sign in front of it. We declare a file name char variable, a char array with max car. We read file name from the user. We ask the user, where do you want to read this data from? Scene.get. Notice the syntax for scene.get. Ignore the new line at the end. It's very important. After the user types in the file name and hits enter, that enter is going to sit in the buffer and you need to get rid of it. Otherwise, the next time you go to read some data, it's going to sit there and it's going to cause trouble. Then we open the file in file.open file name. If the file did not open, we output an error message and we exit. Exit will kick us out of the program. Program terminating is going to end. If they want to try again, they need to restart the program. The function ends. If all goes well, we'll come back here. Um, then we call our read data function. The read data function again takes the file stream variable. Now the file is open, all is good, and it takes the array. Then we go here and see what do we do in the read data function. And notice whatever it returns, the read data is a is a function that returns an integer and that goes into our size variable. So that's the count of the number of items in our list. So here's my read data function. File stream variable comes in by reference. We initialize size at zero. Here's a local variable initialized at zero. We check for end of file. We read. Remember, they are separated by space. It's very simple reading. Extraction operator, we read the string. And then we read the model number and the bin number. And then we increment size. Every time we read a line of data, we must increment the size. When the while loop is done, size will have the number of lines of data, and we return it. And when we return it, it gets put into this size in main, which is our local variable. Now it has a count. Now I can output the data to the screen. It's simply a for loop that goes through and outputs all of the 
uh, data that I just loaded from the file just to show the user this is what you have. Notice I have some manipulators. I go through a for loop. So I pass the array and size. The size has how many lines of data I need to output to the user. And it outputs it. And then I have another function. The next function I call after output data is in a do while loop. Remember, we want to go into a do while loop. So we keep our menu displayed all the time until the user hits Q to quit. So display menu. Let's take a look at our display menu and see how it looks. Um, all it has is a few C out statements. It says, please pick one of the options. M to search by model number, B to search by bin number, and Q to quit. It's a very simple menu. You can always add to the menu if you want to. Once the display menu is done, notice my main says, here's my do while loop, display the menu, read input, and execute command. Let's take a look at those two functions, read input. Read input, let me get it here, one more, right here. Read input has a char variable declared. Remember, the menu is sitting there. The user is uh, going to hit something. So you need to use cn or cn.get or something to read the input that the user is going to enter cn.get because we are using a char variable. Read whatever the user enters, the character. Ignore the new line. Anytime you use cn.get, you must ignore the new line. And you return that char, which gets passed to execute command. So this option that comes to execute command is now going to have the letter that the user entered, whether it's M or B or Q. And based on whatever they entered, we're going to do something here. We're going to switch that option and we're going to use some case statements if it is m we're going to search by model we're going to call that function notice the array that comes in here gets passed in turn to that function as well if it is b we search by bin and again we pass that array and the size if it's q we simply quit out of the program and of course there's a default if they enter anything other than m or b or q we need to tell them illegal input and again, we're going to go back to the menu so they can try again. So let's go do our search model. Let's take a look at it. If they enter M, here's our array and the size that comes in. We have some local variables. We're going to say string, search string. So they need to enter a string to search. So we tell them enter model number to search for. You use get line to read that string. Now we have to go through our whole list. So we go through this for loop that starts with i equals 0, i less than size. And we have an if statement that says if storeroom of i, remember it's a list now, dot model number is equal to the double equal to to compare the search string that they enter. This is an exact comparison. It will find it only if it is exactly the same, which in this case is fine for us. If it is exactly the same match, then we output it. We say found equals true and we break out of there because the assumption is that there won't be multiple model numbers that are the same. So the minute we find the model number, we break out of there in this situation. Or you could go through the whole loop and output all the model numbers, which could be there. It depends on your database. And then finally, we have another. This found happens to be a Boolean variable. If found is true, then we don't have to say anything. If not found says, if we didn't find it after going through the whole for loop when we come out, we have to tell them model not found. If you don't say anything, it won't make any sense for user interface. So if not found, we say see out model not found. Now if you go take a look at our search by bin number, it's going to look exactly the same except this comparison. Storeroom of i dot bin number is equal to search string. We even use the same search string because it's local variable. Once we are done with the function, it goes out of scope. So we don't have to worry about that. But it's exactly the same function with a few minor changes where we replace all the model number with bin numbers. Okay, so if you build this program and run it, this is how it's going to look. Just enter file name. My file name is called inventory.txt. So it loads it. It says these are the things that we just loaded. So if I want to search by model number, I say M. It says enter model number to search for. Just type in something. It says there it is. So if I want to search by bin number, let's type in something that does not exist. It says bin not found. And I can keep going until I want to quit. If I try any other letters, this illegal input, please pick one of the options. Q to quit, and I quit.